Hello, how are you? Uh, I'm Zeb Khan and in this video we are going to convert these large blocky forms that we have in angular material, something like this, to something like this. This is a nice looking compact form and we are going to use all of the angular material official theming APIs for this purpose and some simple configuration settings for a mat form field. So hang out till the end. So if you're someone like me and you have used material for quite a bit of time, you'll know that the material form fields are particularly large and they're very blocky. And this was reminded to me recently by one of the comments on my channel by um, Gayatriya here, who said, Hi sir, can you please create a tutorial of angular material theming and typography where we can customize the size of the form fields globally in the application? Angular material form fields are usually of big height and size. This is uh, something which I'd been thinking about uh, for quite some time because in all of my recent projects, I've tried to keep the form fields to a minimum value. And you can see all of the other component uh, libraries around there on the web. And you can see that shared CN, for example, it has this nice looking minimal input field here. You can see even PrimeNG. PrimeNG is an Angular library primarily, but even that has an input field which is smaller in uh, size. So whatever the reasons that the material uh, design team decided to make such a big default sort of uh, form field, I really prefer not to use this anymore. So uh, let's try to make this smaller, but all by using the material uh, theming APIs. So first of all, let me just give you an overview of uh, the project here. So it's just a simple thing. Uh, I've in fact generated the code from Plot AI and uh, I just created a simple form uh, using this. If you go in the code here and in fact, let's just split the screen here so that we can see both of the things here, the code and the this here. So if you can see the code here, I just have a material form here and I have material form fields, a form within that is a material form field, the full name, email, phone number, date of birth. And then I, in each of the material form fields, I also have a mat suffix. It looks a bit more visually appealing. And uh, then I have also added the reactive forms, the errors and all of the things that you would need. Uh, I've added an address, a select uh, just for completeness sake. And I'm also handling all of the errors here with the reactive form and, and an on submit submission handler. All right, so very simple. And it's also responsive. So I've added some styling here. It's a simple CSS Flexbox styling, all right. And if I, for example, take it back here like this, you can see that it nicely adjusts itself as I change the screen here, all right. So, Pretty nice, but the only problem is that our form fields are pretty blocky as the default form fields are. We need to change the style of the form fields here, but we want to make it globally as Gayatri has suggested. So how do we do that? So first of all, the material form field, we could go and change in all of the material form fields here and we could change the appearance property here, but actually we want to do it globally. Yes, okay. So the best place then is to go in the app config where we can actually provide an injection token which the material form field API already provides and we can override that with our custom settings for the whole application, all right? So we're going to specify here another specific provider and we're going to provide mat form field default options. Now this mat form field default options is imported from angular material form field and it's the default app wide injection token which you can set up and we can do use value and the appearance has for every mat form field, there are two forms of appearance in the material three specification. So there is fill, which is this one, which I don't actually like. And then there is the outline one, which is a more traditional one, the traditional form field style. So we're going to switch this to outline here. All right, let's save this and let's try this out. And you can see finally we have got rid of that fill effect that I don't really like anymore. Okay. Okay. So we have this outline, but still the fields are a bit big. But before uh, changing the fields to be a bit big, you'll also see that we have a bit of space at the bottom here. And now this is the default space, which is a subscript type space where you can see that the error is displayed. But often in normal form field and uh, normal forms that we have normal in other component libraries, this space is not allocated, you know, all of the time because the uh, errors are not going to show all of the time. All right. So in that case, we have another option which we can change and that is the subscript sizing option. So the subscript sizing option is has two values, two possible values. One is dynamic and one is static. So the default is static. I don't know for what reason, but we want to change it to dynamic. All right, let's change it to dynamic. And when we change it to dynamic, you can see that the spacing is better. So it the form is a bit more compact. All right. And now when you click on this and when you get this error, then it's going to result in a bit of a displacement. 
of the whole form. So now it's this is sort of subjective for you. If you, for example, want that layout shift while the user is entering information, and this is the typical behavior in most forms, you will see, then that's fine. Otherwise, you can still use the static option, the default option that you. But I am going to prefer this uh, dynamic option because I don't want to show that error space all of the time. So let's remove this by entering the full name here. Okay. So this sort of makes it a lot better than before, as you can see. But you you can also do some more, and for that you'll need to use the theming APIs now. In Angular Material Theming, we have a, a dimension of color, we have a dimension of typography, and we also have a dimension of density. Now, this density dimension is basically related to how compact your components need to be. And so the density has a scale, and the scale is coming scale, the default value is zero, which is the highest value, and you can reduce it all the way down to minus five, basically, to make it as compact as you want. All right. So now we have set here a custom theme here. And if you don't know how to set that up, you can refer to the Angular Material documentation on this. It's pretty simple. All you have to do is you just need to use Angular Material as mat at the top here, include mat.core. And then you need to use a mat.define uh, function to create the default theme, the custom theme that you want. And then you can specify the three theming dimensions that you have. I specified the color to be the mat azure palette and the theme type to be light. Now, I also want to specify the density here, which is the second thing that I want here. And density has a scale value, which by default is zero here. Okay, this should be like this. So scale zero. And then uh, at the bottom in the root or in the HTML or in the body, whatever, wherever you want to include the styles, you need to do mat dot all component themes. Well, honestly, this is not the preferred way to do it because this is going to include all of the component themes. If you want to optimize sort of the size of your CSS that is included, you should include only the components that you are using. Specifically, I'm just going to use it this for testing. So we're going to include this default theme here and we're going to do matter all component default theme and this is going to apply or create all of the styles related to your different components and your overall material application. All right. So let's save this and we have density scale as zero and you can see that nothing changes because zero is the maximum and this is the default. All right. But we would like it to make it more compact. So let's try reducing this. Let's make it minus one. And you can see that it becomes a bit compact. Let's make it minus two. You can see it becomes more compact and you can go all the way to minus five. Let's go to minus five and let's see. Okay, you can see that the, our forms are pretty compact now. Now it's up to you if you want to keep this. But I personally, I found the minus four as the perfect sort of the size for my own liking it looks good as well and it has that enough spacing and padding so that everything works fine all right okay but one thing you'll notice here one problem here is that we're applying this density scale to all of the component themes here and you'll see that the button has also shrunk here right so if you want to see that more clearly you're going to see that if you go back to the scale zero you'll see our fields change to the same and our button is normal but if we go to minus four here you can see that our button also reduces in its uh, density. Now, you might want this or you might not want this, so it's up to you. But I personally only want to change the mat form field here. So how do we do that now? What we can do is that we can create another theme here and we can actually call this compact theme and we can use the same thing, mat define theme. And inside of this compact theme, we don't need to send the color because this is only going to specify the density. So we can just specify the density here. In fact, this is not an object. I keep confusing this with an object. We can do the scale to be, in fact, this also needs to be in uh, this. And for scale to be, and this needs to be, the scale needs to be minus four. All right. And we're just, just going to reduce, remove this density here and just keep this density here. All right. So this is a compact theme. Yeah. So it's giving an error because I need to do this mat.define theme instead of mat.define theme. Let's just save this and you can now see that our density is removed from our all of our components because we have defined a separate one. Now, how do we only apply this to the mat form field because we want to only apply to those? What we can do is we can use these built-in mixins that we have here. So we also have mixins, uh, mixins available in Angular Material Theming API for all of the specific components and for all of the dimensions as well. So we can do mat dot form field density so that the theme that we are passing in here 
only its density is going to be used to update and for only the form field. All right. So we can do compact theme. And now if we try this out, we're going to see that our form fields become nice and compact and everything works as before. But our buttons and all of the other components, they remain the same. All right. And you also see that this there was some issue with this compactness of this, which is resolved and it aligns kind of better than it was before. All right. So nice and easy. We have a nice looking form, compact form using Angular material. So this is sort of the default that I, I would like to use in my applications. Let me know if you like this. Let me know if you would prefer something else. And let me know if you prefer the original uh, Angular Material form fields. So if I just enter my information here a bit, I can, you can see that how it looks when the information has been entered. You can select things from here. So all in all, a pretty nice looking form, a reasonable looking form, and it can fit any space on your UI if you use these theming APIs. All right, so I hope you liked this video. It was a short and simple one. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel so that this channel can reach more people and can help more developers. We can all be better Angular developers in the end. All right. So thanks for watching. And in the next video, I'm going to uh, bring out something more interesting. Thanks.